Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing chemokines. Okay, so in this video what we want to discuss is the four different types of chemokines. Okay, so firstly let me list off the four families in wh into which the uh, chemokines are grouped. Okay, so we'll start off with the main two families. So the main two families are the CC chemokines. Okay, and also the CXC chemokines. So the CC chemokines is a whole family. Okay, so I'll, I might just abbreviate, put at the top a title. So these are the families of chemokines. So the first family is the CC family of chemokines. Okay, the next family is what's known as the CXC chemokines. And these names actually do make incredible sense. These are telling you the positions of those first two cysteine residues with respect to each other. Okay, so we'll discuss that in a moment, but you might like to just anticipate or guess for yourself what CC and CXC mean. Okay, uh, the next type is this type that only has two cysteines, which we'll talk about, uh, which is the C chemokines. Okay, also occasionally known as the XC chemokines, but more commonly called the C chemokines. And then finally, the CX3C chemokines. Now, these C chemokines and these CX3C chemokines, those are rare, basically. They're, they're not uh, major. If you're going to remember two of the families, remember the CC chemokines and the CXC chemokines. These have absolutely loads of members which are very, very important in the immune response. These three are a little bit more niche. Sorry, these two are a little bit more niche. Right, okay, so we'll start off with looking at the CC uh, chemokines. Okay, so this is very, very simple. Um, their structure is exactly like that picture that we've drawn already, basically. And the two cysteines, the first and the second cysteine, they are right next to each other, basically. So let me redraw out this picture because it doesn't hurt to revise. Okay, so CC chemokines. So the picture is exactly like what we've drawn. So here's the amino terminus. Let's start off with that. And then we loop around here. And now we're in a plane behind this line here. Okay, and then we've got these three beta strands. One, two, three. And then it loops back in front of the beta pleated sheet to form this alpha helix, which then has the carboxylic acid group there. So again, let's highlight in the alpha helix, which remember is in green here. Okay, let's highlight in the beta strands in orange again. So these are the beta strands, one, two, three. And now let's put on our important cysteines. So we've got our first cysteine here, and now the next amino acid right next to that first cysteine is another cysteine. That is why they are called CC chemokines, because the first and the second cysteine are absolutely next to each other. You'll have a cysteine followed by another cysteine. Okay, so it's cysteine, cysteine chemokines, basically. Okay, now the third and the fourth cysteines are still here, and again, you'll still form disulfide bonds between the first and the third cysteine and the second and the fourth cysteine. So here are your disulfide bonds that hold uh, your chemokine together. Okay, so all of the CC chemokines have this same basic structure. Now, of course, they are going to differ in the exact amino acid sequence, but they will have these conserved four cysteines. So each of the CC chemokines is different, i.e. the other amino acids will be different, but they all fold in the same way, and at these positions they will um, have these conserved four cysteines, basically. So they're similar, okay? Similar enough to be grouped into a family. Now, let's have an example of a CC chemokine. So, we're going to pick a very famous example of a CC chemokine which is CCL2, and this nicely demonstrates the naming of CC chemokines. So, we're going to start off with CCL2. Now, what does this stand for? Well, the CC bit stands for CC chemokine, so you would read this as CC chemokine, and then 
the L stands for ligand 2. Okay, now this basically means that it is the ligand for the receptor, it's not a receptor. But don't think that it's a ligand for the CC chemokine, no. This is a CC chemokine that will look just like this. And uh, it's also got another name, confusingly. It's also known as MCP1, okay, which stands for Monocyte Chemoattractant Protein 1. Okay, so M is for monocyte. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Monocyte, and then the C is for chemoattractant, and then the P is for protein, and then 1. Okay, so monocyte chemoattractant protein 1. And although that does name doesn't tell you that it's a CC chemokine, it does tell you nicely what it actually does. Okay, so uh, CCL2 basically is going to be uh, put on the surface of endothelial cells, just like I've shown you here. So we'll draw a little picture. So here's our endothelial cell. And basically, you will mount the CCL2 on the surface of the endothelial cell, and it will be attached to the heparan sulfate. Uh, proteoglycan that's on within the gly glycocalyx. Okay, so here's our glycocalyx, and on the surface we're now attaching this CCL2. Okay, so the CC chemokine ligand 2. Now what does it do? Well basically it's going to bind to a protein that is on the surface of monocytes, which is a type of white blood cell that's circulating within the blood. Okay, so here comes the receptor for CCL2, and this is on the surface of our monocyte here. So a monocyte is a precursor to a macrophage. So you don't have macrophages circulating within the blood. Instead, you have monocytes. And when monocytes move out of the blood into the interstitial fluid, they will differentiate into macrophages. Okay, so this is a precursor to a macrophage. Now, this monocyte, and I should at least label it up, so this is a monocyte, a very important white blood cell, okay? Uh, this monocyte has on its surface a receptor for the CCL2, uh, CC chemokine, okay? And this is known as the CCR2, okay? So the receptors for CC chemokines are abbreviated to CCR, and this just merely stands for CC chemokine receptor 2. Okay, so uh, this is a nice case, basically. This is where uh, the naming all works out nicely, because people tried initially to name the receptors with the same number as the uh, CC chemokine was named. So we have CC ligand, uh, chemokine ligand 2 binding to the CC chemokine receptor 2. However, of course, with these naming systems, it always goes to pot, basically, at the end. Uh, so you'll have, um, to w when you get to higher numbers, you know, you'll have CCL21, and it will be binding to some much lower receptor, which had already been uh, named for the CCL7, basically. Uh, and CCL21, I think, does bind to CCR7 um, um, or something along those lines. And it will be because, um, because basically the receptor also binds to the uh, ligand that was named 7. So of course, if you've got a receptor responding to multiple different chemokines, then it will end up that you, um, you get this um, overlap, basically. So you'll have chemokines with numbers that don't match the number on the receptor. But in this case, it works out quite nicely. Okay, right. So there's our example of a CC chemokine. Now, what, what it will do is it will bind the monocyte to the endothelial cell, which will capture the monocyte by the endothelial cell, and then the monocyte will diapodes across the endothelium, get into the interstitial fluid, and differentiate into a macrophage. And hence, you've recruited a monocyte or a macrophage to the site of uh, inflammation. Okay, so we'll continue this discussion where we'll look at CXC chemokines in the next video.